Hi, welcome to this presentation on confidence intervals by Conway Deacon. A confidence interval is a statistical method displaying a range or sample or a result that a true value is expected to be found. Now, as the name suggests, a confidence interval is the measure of how confident we are that a true value we're looking for is found within the interval's range. The percentage given to confidence intervals can be any value up to 99.9%, .9%, but in research and health, the value of 95% is used as a standard measure of confidence. Now, a quick note here that even though you could have a confidence interval of 100%, it would not be of any use because the interval will always contain the true value. So to understand confidence intervals, it's essential to appreciate what they represent, how they are represented. Confidence intervals are related to standard deviation and standard error, with 95% being two standard deviations. They can also be displayed in the graphical form as a line with a dot in the middle or as a diamond. The line either side of the dot represents the upper and lower limits of confidence, with the dot representing the point estimate. The diamond's width represents the same upper and lower limits. However, most of the time, confidence intervals will be seen in text form with the true value or the point estimate or the observed result and the 95% confidence limits in brackets. So you may wonder, where does the 95% come from? To answer this, we need to take a closer look at standard deviation. And in research terms, standard deviation and standard error represent the uncertainty around the point estimate or the mean of the result. Two standard deviations from the mean represents 95% of the collected data under the curve. The deviations upper and lower values represent the confidence intervals upper and lower values. So one concept that confidence intervals are greater is to be visual guides for the variance around the point estimate or the mean. One variable that will affect the confidence interval size is the sample size or the study size. So going back to the standard deviation graph, we can see that a larger sample or study sample, we'll see the variation around the mean being tighter and smaller. As the results get smaller, the variance and uncertainty around the mean will get larger. So in plain terms, the more data available, the smaller the range of the intervals are. So quite simply, more results will equal more precision, fewer results, less precision. To put this in a real life scenario, let's imagine you want to know the confidence interval or weight of apples in an orchard. You're asked to supply an average weight and an interval range that the apples will fall into. So you head out to the orchard, you select random samples of apples, noting that you need a good sample size to be more precise and more representative of your apples. So with the sample collected, you weigh each apple, you note their weights, you, you work out the variance, which will eventually give you the standard deviation. Now, we know we want 95% confidence, so we would take two standard deviations and find that the average apple is 164 grams, give or take five grams. It's this give or take part that represent the upper and lower limits of the confidence interval. The 164 grams is your point estimate. But what does all this mean for research and statistical analysis in health and science? If using our previous example, the apple weights, we could repeat the random sampling 100 times and note that 95% of the time we will see the apple's weight fall between 159 and 169 grams, with five apples weighing outside of our interval's range. This would equate to one in 20 or 5% of the apples being heavier or lighter than the upper and lower confidence levels. So 95% confidence intervals are used in research articles to give the reader a clear idea of the quality of the research. Intervals allow healthcare professionals and policymakers to make informed decisions based on the strength of the study results and the size and the spread of the data around the point estimate. This is demonstrated best in a forest plot. A single study is not always definitive. If studies are pulled together in a meta-analysis, we see an overall confidence in the studies as long as they have the same outcome measures. So here we can see the diamond confidence interval and it represents the pooled data from seven studies. When displayed in this way, they allow for fast understanding into the outcome or intervention. So this can be seen here in a forest plot from a systematic review on cholesterol treatments. So note the studies on the left, the confidence interval shown on the graph, and as well as the text form on the right of the plot. Finally, note the diamond confidence interval at the bottom in this case, favoring the treatment. Thank you for watching and I hope you're confident in confidence intervals.